Oh, it's very windy today. I started by reading some of you guys' comments about the battery and what your opinion of what it is. And I guess by the sounds of it, I should uh, submit for a another return, I guess. So I did initiate the email to DJI again, and I guess we're gonna do this all over again to see what happens now. I'm actually still waiting for a reply, so let's see how it goes. I was reading this one interesting piece of news today where apparently somewhere in Ottawa uh, some pilots saw a drone really high up in the air and of course as you know this is going to create hysteria that drones are dangerous, people are flying near it and all that stuff. Um, just to basically talk a little bit about the uh, article because I know for things like this I usually have a different perspective when I read things like this because uh, a lot of people who don't fly drones would say well this is even more reason to ban the drones, ban them all! So there was actually some uh, audio of this and I guess I'll let you guys listen to it first on what the uh, radio transmission was of the conversation. Tower, we just have to avoid a drone here on the final just for past our left wing. Jazz 975. Jazz 975? Yeah, Jazz 975. Jazz 975, uh, same altitude? Yeah, it was our same altitude. We just had to do a 1500 feet, or sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's probably at 1500 feet for Jazz 975. Jazz 975, Tower Roger, copy, remark, uh, 1140 at 6, uh, gusting 60 with the traffic on the rollout, exiting at Fox Truck, clear to land runway 07. Clear to land, Jazz 975. Well, I think for the most part, most drone flyers agree people like this uh, should be punished, like, individually on a case-by-case -case basis. Although, uh, keep in mind, I don't know if this actually was a drone or if it's going to end up kind of like those other reports where they ended up being like a plastic bag or something like that. Because one of the things that's interesting is how high this guy was apparently according to this recording and what I'm reading here. Uh, it says that his altitude was about 1500 feet or 457 meters in the air. So when I'm thinking about this, we often say, well, what is appropriate for a person to fly? And for me, like I've always stayed within 90 meters in the air. And because people often argue, okay, an airplane should ever have no business being at a certain uh, altitude and likewise a consumer drone should have no business being uh, above a certain altitude as well. So in that case, even with the interim laws, it doesn't help if you think about it. Why make it so overboard where it doesn't really stop the people who are insisting in flying in these crazy heights? Because I think we all agree there's no way this guy should have been even close to these guys in general but they did it anyways. So how did the law actually help in any way? Not to say there shouldn't be any restrictions, of course, but again, what's the point of having laws that only restrict law-abiding citizens as opposed to people like this? I mean, if you want to target people like this, then target people like this. Don't go after people like me, for example, who's just flying consumer drones for fun well below the height of where any aircraft or whatever should be uh, near me. Now, there was a quote here saying it's from the CEO of the Ottawa International Airport Authority and it says, uh, in terms of, I guess, drones being near uh, airplanes, he even quotes here saying, it doesn't happen a lot, but even once is too often. So in context to the conversation of are these laws overkill and for people that say, yeah, like for sure, this should be the way it is. Who exactly is flying the planes like these? Is it the normal recreational flyers like myself? Or is it some guy that's going to fly this way regardless of what you put? So again, isn't it better just to have a general law that punishes people like that as opposed to a broad one that, in my opinion, basically uh, discriminates against people who are law-abiding in many ways? Now, I often heard people with the uh, argument saying, well, it's bad apples like these that ruin it for people like myself. So yeah, it's justified. I don't agree with that because, in my opinion, I mean, how many times over the past few days have I heard of people of a certain religion, a certain look, a certain career, a certain profession, or whatever, who performed a hideous crime for some reason. Should I be typecasting everyone like that saying, oh, because of that one person, now I have to be prejudiced or discriminating against everybody of this certain bucket? I don't think so. You know, in many ways, I think this just comes down to awareness, and I think the government is doing it wrong, where instead of trying to gather the efforts of all the responsible drone flyers and the general public. Instead, they're basically trying to make people extremely afraid of something where realistically they shouldn't be too afraid about. Have you guys heard of that story recently about some maniac that went on uh, Facebook Live and he basically started shooting like innocent people like in a live stream like on his phone, for example? It might sound ridiculous nowadays, but imagine if, say, smartphones or live streaming was still pretty brand spanking new for the most part, 
and the authorities' way of dealing it was to tell the public, if you see anybody with a smartphone live streaming, phone 911 right away. Basically, not the person in general, but the tech in general. Now, wouldn't you think that's a little silly? Because in many ways, that's kind of like how they're handling this uh, drone situation in many ways. They're basically attacking the tech and everyone that uses it in general. Now, to my understanding, the way the story got resolved is they basically published the incident, like the person in general, they made the person in general essentially uh, famous, like a most wanted guy. So basically in a big uh, manhunt type of way. And to my knowledge, uh, the way it uh, unfolded was somebody in a, he drove by like a McDonald's or something like that. And then someone recognized him. And so when he asked for his fries, he basically stopped and said, okay, just wait a minute, sir. So they basically was procrastinating him. So basically the person uh, was procrastinating him as much as possible to try to get the police there. But as you can see, uh, as a result of making awareness of the individual that's pursuing the crime and getting the efforts of everyone to kind of help along, basically that helped to solve the case a lot faster. Well, I don't know about solve, but what happened was apparently the police arrived and then because he was trapped, he ended up ended, ending his own life. But again, in that case, you got people to work together to essentially go after that specific individual, not the tech. Because I think you would agree, that's kind of stupid if you're saying, okay, anybody that uses a cell phone in general or the live streams, full 911 in general, making it so broad and discriminating. But instead, you could be using the power of the people, everyone, all the law abiding people, all people that use it responsibly to go after, you know, the true troublemakers. And again, from my personal experience, uh, the people in the drone community already do that. When they see people that are being really dangerous, they try to find ways to contact the authority because they don't want crazy people to stop, you know, the hobby because there are a lot of people doing good with it. Funny thing is people often say there's power in numbers. So if this whole law is about safety, for example, then I would say stop making people divided over the issue get people to come together. Again, non-drone flyers or flyers alike, I think we all have the same goal. I mean, we all fly it safely. There's only a certain select people, for example, the small percentage of people that are dangerous. In my opinion, that's no reason to make something so broad and, and you're basically dividing your numbers in many ways. And for those who don't fly drones where these laws may be brand new to you, like you're wondering like, hey, like you didn't realize it's so bad. I mean, just for the perspective again, imagine uh, with this incident with the uh, Facebook Live person where the authority or government's reaction or whatever was that anyone who's using a smartphone now, there's an interim order where everyone with a smartphone has to put their name, their address, their contact information right in front of their phones. What would you say to that? You'd probably say the same thing, like, what? That's ridiculous. But essentially, that's what they're doing to drone flyers. So hopefully I encourage people, like, if you don't fly drones, to look into it a little more as well. I mean, just the other day, uh, there was a person who knew I flew drones, but it wasn't until he actually saw the footage when he started to realize, like, oh my god, like, this is, like, incredible. And then you realize afterwards when people start banning people from doing simple things like that, they're like, hey, hey, this is crazy. So a person like me, I mean, I still try to get my uh, footages and so forth. I uh, haven't really been able to do it since because of how restricted the law is. But hopefully uh, for people who don't fly drones, again, uh, you'll look into it a little more too. Because in my opinion, uh, it takes the effort of everyone to be educated. All right, other than that, see you guys later.